Bethesda announced some huge changes for 2021, starting with the stash increase and new inventory tabs. I got a follow-up on the Flag Mystery 2 and some other events. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. This Friday was a huge surprise for everyone. Bethesda announced some game-changing additions coming in January 2021, such as a huge stash increase, stack weight, new inventory tabs, and even an interface change for player vendors. But there's more. Season 3 is starting soon, and you can now enjoy a double experience and double caps event. Fallout for Hope is kicking off this Monday as well, and dozens of teapots were discovered. Let's not forget about the mysterious flag 1904 near Helvetia. Actually, let's start right there. The mystery has now been solved. Alright, in my previous news I went over a mystery I discovered on Twitter. Basically, a player found a mysterious red flag with 1904 under the map, close to Helvetia. Nobody knew what it was or what it meant, plus lots of theories started to emerge right after I posted the video. But no worries everyone, you can stop speculating, wondering, because a data miner found a file with his exact flag on it, which supposedly belongs to Fallout 4, it's the same flag found in Diamond City somewhere. I honestly can't remember where anymore, I don't think I even saw this flag there but that's what the file specifies. So there you go, mystery solved. Some dev added this flag under the map, probably by mistake, and left it there until now. I don't think there is any hidden meaning or references attached to it. It was just a silly mistake which happens to have a few coincidences attached to it, such as the chapel called Bethesda, founded in 1904, as I presented to you in my previous news. Okay, next I have something peculiar to show you guys. Cyberpunk got officially released a couple of days ago, but surprisingly, a lot of you have no interest in playing it. I started a pool to understand your interest levels, and over 40% said they don't intend to play or try this new mainstream game. I know the sample is not very representative, only about 4,000 people voted, but still, I was expecting to see a smashing majority claiming to have interest in playing Cyberpunk. You know, in the past weeks I have seen so many comments from friends, from in my Discord, other servers, everywhere on the internet, everything is good about this game, everyone wants to play the game, but... You guys don't seem to share the same opinion, but that's totally fine, I was just not expecting such results. Well, if you are interested to hear my opinion, I think you guys should play it whenever you have a chance. I didn't have huge expectations for this game, but after playing a dozen of hours, I found myself really immersed in enjoying it more than I should. I actually just want to play more, but I don't have time. I'm still preparing my charity stream happening next week, but overall, the game is great. I feel like it's a mix of GTA with Watch Dogs and a bit of The Division in the middle with a very intriguing story but with better elements and a cyberpunk touch of course. This is my honest short opinion, the game is great and you couldn't ask for more from a single player RPG. There are some bugs too, it's true, but nothing major in my experience. I know you didn't come here to hear me talking about cyberpunk so let's keep going and return to Fallout 76. Well, 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 Bethesda is bringing a lot of live quality improvements for the start of 2021. With their January update, they will implement at least six major changes. The first one is about your stash, it's going up by 50%. Yep, 50%, you heard me right. At this very moment, the stash limit is 800 pounds, but that's about to change. Next month, the new limit will be 1,200 pounds, an increase of 400 pounds. Isn't that beautiful? It was about time. I mean, Bethesda announced her wish to increase the stash limit early this year, but until now, nothing else had been announced. It took them a long time, but at least it's happening. 
This is great news for everyone, especially those with no Fallout First membership. You will have a lot more space to stash your junk and scrap and any other items, really. I will finally be able to stash more decent weapons without having to move them to my alt, for example. So that's definitely a quality of life improvement in so many ways. Something else Bethesda is adding is the ability to see the stack weight. Right now, the system only shows the item weight, even if you have them all stacked up, which makes it impossible to know the total stack weight unless you manually do the calculation, of course. With the upcoming update though, the individual item weight will stay as it is, but a new line will appear in your stacks called stack weight to let you know the total stack weight as obvious. It will look like this example Bethesda published already. As far as we know, all stacks will have this new line, including scrap, ammo and 8 items. The next news is about a brand new inventory tab called New. This was a total surprise to me because I can deny it has a lot of value, but I have never heard of such a thing, so I didn't see Bethesda coming with this. But basically they want to make it easier for players to find a specific item they have just looted. So they are adding this new tab, it will display all the new items looting during a single play session. What do they mean by play session though? I am assuming it's every time you log in until you log off or disconnect, that's what makes the most sense. Anyway, this tab will have a standard order style from newest to oldest. So the items you see first on this tab are exactly the latest items you looted. This has a lot of benefits, especially for crowded tabs. You no longer have to scroll down or browse tabs while trying to find a new item. Muito bom. The aid inventory section is changing as well, Bethesda is basically dividing it into two. For starters, the aid tab will remain there as it is, but now it will only accommodate your aid items, such as buffs, serums and medical items like antibiotics, disease cures and such. The new tab they are adding is called food drinks and as the name says, it will include all your foods, drinks and ingredients to craft them. This is a highly requested change and a very positive one in my view. It's quite annoying to manually eat and drink sometimes because, well, at least on my end, I have so many different camps. Yes, I do collect them, so this means I usually have to scroll down a lot in order to find a specific food I just crafted, for example. So bring it on, this change is really promising. Another important change will happen in the upper reel tab, Bethesda is also dividing it into two. The upper reel tab will only now contain your outfits, headwear and cosmetics in general. They are adding the armor tab, which will then contain all your armor pieces, legendary or not. I am assuming your backpacks will be there too, since it gives you stats and benefits. It's somewhat considered a armor piece, even though it's not exactly armor. This means you no longer have to scroll down dozens of times to find the new armor piece you have just looted. I mean, I carry most of my outfits with me, so it's not so easy when I want to sell or drop normal armor, for example. It's just so difficult to find them among dozens and dozens of cosmetics. Well, that problem is about to be gone, and that's amazing. The last announced change is about the player vending machines, but as they're adding some quality of life changes to the map interface. First of all, it will no longer show a category if there are no respective items being sold, so grey categories will be hidden from the interface altogether. The second change is an addition, you will now be able to see the legendary stars of the gear being sold, this will apply to both weapons and armor pieces. Here's a preview of how the new vendor interface will look like. It basically creates new entries for new types of gears. So if you are selling two stars, one star, three stars, it's all different categories for the armor and weapons. I think this is also a really nice change because it allows players to know a little bit more about the type of gear being sold without having to check camp by camp. So bring it on as well. Season 3 is starting next week on December 15 and with it, lots of new things are being added to the game. 
I already made a complete guide featuring 15 changes coming live with season 3, The Scribe of Avalon, so feel free to check it out for all the details. There are even special rewards for Fallout First members for the very first time. Now, Bethesda only went over some new things, such as the backpack trinkets, the flare, the new light allies and a few new items. One of them even has a passive buff for agility. Again, there's a lot more coming with Season 3, but I don't want to repeat myself. I'm leaving the link to my Season 3 overview below, as well as Wikipedia's page with all the rank rewards, including the Fallout first, it's a complete list, so feel free to check it out if you want to check what's coming. Talking about new things, there is an ongoing event right now. You can enjoy double experience and double vendor caps until December 14. Yep, that's right. But as they enabled the double experience on December 10 and then announced they are also doubling the daily caps. At vendors, which means you can farm double the caps every day for a couple of days. Don't forget you can stack all the other intelligence and experience boosts with the double experience event active for that ultimate grinding. I have several guides on how to do that, on how to reach 200 or even 300 experience boost, so feel free to check it out if you are not familiar with the strategy. Happy farming, by the way! Something interesting that came to my attention was this huge collection of teapots discovered in the game files by a data miner. I had no idea this existed until now, but it seems like they are part of the game files for a long while. I wonder if this means Bethesda is going to add these different teapots as camp decor items in the future. Well, they really should. I mean, they look so different that they could end up fitting different purposes, different displays and teams in your camp, you know, a metal pot would perfectly fit on the top of a kitchen table, meanwhile a porcelain painted pot would probably look gorgeous in a shelf, just saying. I think this would be a really nice addition, but I don't know, maybe it's just data that is not being used, they have lots of that in the game files. Well, only time will tell. Next, I have something brand new to share. A few days ago, I was trying to build some new items in one of my shelters, just to find out this strange bug that blocks you from previewing every camp item. It also prevents you from building anything, as you can see. I tried to re-enter the shelter and the problem was still there. It got me worried, so I decided to relog to see if this was a persistent bug or something alike. After joining another server though, the bug was simply gone, thankfully. It was just a scare, but still, that's a major and disrupting bug. So if this happens to you, just relog or join another server and that should do the trick. You should be good to go again. My last news for this video is about the upcoming charity event Fallout for Hope happening from December 14 to 20. It's being organized by Chad, the Fallout 76 podcast, who managed to unite over 300 content creators. Yep, it's going to be massive. The event's goal is to gather funds for St. Jude, which is a research hospital in the United States responsible for treating the most difficult cases of cancer and diseases in children. There are lots of activities and special events prepared for this week, so keep an eye on your favorite Fallout 76 streamer or creator. Moreover, some Bethesda employees are also taking part of this cause. I'm participating as well, and as you probably heard already, I'm preparing some huge surprises, such as thematic panels and interviews. I will be live on December 17 and 20, so make sure to write down these dates on your calendar if you don't want to miss anything. For this video, I have an array of bugs to show you to finish off. I found Sam out of his usual fixed location. He was walking around in the other side of the foundation, then some NPCs were also out of their places or on top of benches. Eventually, he went back, but walking backwards? It was just really weird and funny at the same time. Moral of the story though, if you can't find a certain NPC, look around, there's a good chance they are just walking around. And yeah, they didn't disappear, they are just 
not in their usual place. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited for my stream event. It's my very first one and I'm not sure what to expect. I hope to see some familiar names there at least. Well, as usual, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And a huge thanks to all my supporters. You guys are the best. I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.